Well, hello and welcome to Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to see you again and uh, I hope that you've had a reasonable summer. Um, I hope that you're well. Uh, if you're watching this at home because you can't be at school, then uh, I hope you're back at school soon. And if you're watching this because you just want to watch me, uh, good luck with that. We're doing our Catholic Specification Spec B of EDUCAS. Uh, it's a unit called Life and Death. And today we're going to be thinking about a soul and different experiences that people might have that might indicate there may be an afterlife. So I'd like you to grab a bit of paper and a pencil and I'd like you just to draw a little picture of what you think heaven might be like. Okay, it might be rosy little clouds or it might be rainbows in the sky where unicorns dance. I don't know, but you need to draw a little picture of what you think heaven might be like um, and then get ready to show uh, your teacher or your friends. Okay, normally I'd say pause me if you need to, so just pause me whenever because I'm going to move on. Here are some more images about what some people think the soul might be like or what the afterlife might be like. And I wonder if any of those are really uh, speak to you. So we're now going to have our classic cheeso, cheesy intro sequence and just get anything finished that you need to and get ready because we're about to start with our objectives. Okay, so uh, our title today is What is the Soul? What is the Soul? And today we're going to understand the differences between Catholic beliefs and other popular beliefs about the soul. So we're going to understand the differences between Catholic beliefs and other popular beliefs about the soul. Now remember when I say Catholic, it falls under the umbrella of Christianity uh, as it is just a denomination within Christianity as well. So uh, it's going to be a good outcome if you can retail what the Catholic Church teaches about the soul. It's going to be great if you can link various ideas about death to a religious tradition and even better if you can reflect on what you believe and why you believe what you do as well because this is a topic where which is probably quite close to a lot of our hearts, um, especially with the, the current uh, crisis going on. Okay, so I'd like you to draw a little mind map out for me, please. And it's got near-death experiences, mediums, paranormal, reincarnation, and the church on it. And what you're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, uh, one clip now about near-death experiences. And uh, I just find this a really fascinating clip. And um, this is going to play in a second. And what I'd like you to do is to make some notes around the near-death experiences uh, while this clip is on. And I'll talk to you about the others in a moment. Okay, so uh, evidence for the afterlife, near-death experiences. Let's just watch this together. I used to think when you died, you just sort of died. That was it. You just sort of checked out into the darkness. And when you've had a small child pat you condescendingly on the wrist, uh, like I have had, and say, you'll see, Dr. Morse, heaven is fun, uh, you can't help but to be fascinated by these experiences. You hide. For nearly two decades, pediatrician Melvin Morse has been documenting the near-death experiences of critically ill children. Morse has found that despite their ages, these children seem to come away from their experiences with a unique understanding of both life and death. He has found that when he interviews young children who have had near-death experiences, they often say something like, Wow, I saw a light. They have the perception that after they return to life, that light is always with them. And there are pieces of that light in everything they look at. 
Dr. Morse believes these children come up with the same type of insight that theoretical physicists get in the laboratory, that life is a pattern of universal energy. Whether we want to call this energy pattern God or not is up to the individual. Throughout the years, Dr. Morse has compiled hundreds of drawings and writings created by children who have returned from the brink of death. The following are just some pictures and writings. Just wanted to get to that light. Forget my body. For a week, I could see sparkles everywhere. I wasn't afraid to live again, because I knew someday I would see that light. Incredibly, many of these children, barely old enough to write, describe in great detail images and emotions nearly identical to adults who have had near-death experiences. Okay, so now you've watched that, now you've got the idea. In the description below are the links for all the other clips that you're going to need for this section. Some of them are quite lengthy, so I would recommend that you only watch a little bit of them unless you're really getting into them. And the mediums one, I, I think, could be a little bit upsetting. So if you find that it's, going, it's getting a bit uncomfortable for you, just move on from that. The idea is around it is for you to write down some information uh, about those topics. Uh, having watched what you're watching. So that's the plan anyway. So access the description below, click through those links, um, make, and make sure you come back to me afterwards because uh, we've got some other stuff to do as well. And that will give you the idea about what other people believe about the afterlife as well. And maybe, you know, the soul could link to that as well. So what do you believe about the afterlife? It's a huge question. Uh, and now hopefully you've got some information to be making a decision and maybe you don't believe that there is one and that's absolutely fine to hold that belief. However, I think it's really important that you address why you think what you do. So what we've done is we've talked about the Catholic Church teachings about the soul and we've talked about different ideas as well there in terms of religious tradition. So let's just work out how we need to do this question. Uh, it's a part three question. So it's worth five marks. So what you need to do with this is you need to give two reasons for religious beliefs about the question that you're asked. And then you need to use a sacred text to go with it. So my suggestion is you to do uh, a point and explain, another point and explain, and then make sure you've got a quote, maybe one of the tall items, God jitters or Judaism shamer quotes that we've talked about to put in within that as well, explaining it and linking it back to the question. So you need two little paragraphs, um, which do include the uh, teaching, the biblical teaching as well. Okay, so let's just see how we will mark that. Uh, it's out of five marks, and so it is fairly straightforward to mark. What you need to do is you need to count up how many points you've got. You basically have to two points, both of which are explained, with a quote in there as well. Um, and you can see very simply on the screen how that needs to be done. So you give yourself a mark, and then maybe set yourself a target to uh, work on for next time as well. So uh, thank you for your time. I hope that you found this lesson helpful um, and I know we'll be on a journey together. So stay safe, wash your hands, God bless you and I'll see you soon.